Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It is Sunday around 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thanks for stopping by my little corner of the cyber world. My name is Jeff. I'm a full-time reseller, and today we're going to take a look at what has sold since my last what sold video. That's kind of how we do things here. That was on Friday. So Friday was a whopper of a day. It was... I mean, I don't even... Yeah, I'd love to have days like that all the time, but... I don't expect days like that. That was just nuts. Things have gotten back to normal, a little less than normal, to be honest. Um, I've got, let's see here, seven sales at 217, and I have a local sale from a repeat customer off of Craigslist. How cool is that? So they, we haven't scheduled a time yet, but since they've already bought some other previous art from me, uh, I kind of think this is going to be worthwhile showing and i think it's worthwhile because it's beautiful and it's something that i never knew existed from uh, except from until i first picked it up and i ended up buying some and then i ended up buying more at another garage sale i just got a killer deal on this stuff but let's get right into what sold and it looks like it's Four organic, three promoted. So a decent, decent ratio, although I'd rather them all be promoted. Um, all right, so we'll start with, uh, I sold a lot of, and I've already packaged them up, F Formula One racing magazines. Um, sold a lot of nine for 35 bucks. And they were super heavy to ship and there wasn't much difference in price between media and I couldn't ship them media because they were their magazines. But I noticed like once you get to a certain weight, there's no difference anymore. Whereas before it was a significant discount. So the, the, the United States Postal Service has basically done away with that edge. I don't know what the, I know that for 4,300 grams, it was about, it was the same. So I don't know at what point, maybe it's 3,000 grams, maybe it's 2,500 where the, there starts to be a savings. But then at some point that savings just goes away. Um, so that's that's one change that we as resellers really need to be aware of. Like we can't, you know, unless we're getting something super, super cheap and we know it has a really high resale value, we really got to focus on, you know, not buying like heavy books, heavy sets of books or things like that sold this ecstatic trade paperback for 10 bucks going to Canada. Nothing special about this. Uh, Mike Allred does the art. He's kind of, uh, has a unique style. You either like it or you don't. Uh, I like it. I think it's kind of cool. But uh, yeah, 10 bucks on that. 35 bucks on this Bee and Puppy Cat comic. Uh, I've talked about them before. I bought a, a short box of comics. These were the gems that were in there. There were like maybe eight or nine or ten different bee and puppy cats. And it's a series on Netflix, but it first started as a comic. And Natasha Allegri, I believe, is the a creator of this. I think she's the, she's the writer. And uh, these early bee and puppy cats from the first series, there's there's there's... They're, they're sought after. They, they weren't heavily printed. They're, they're, they're a kid's book, so a lot of them got damaged. And there's like some really good variant covers, some good second, second printings of those that, that command decent money. You know, I, uh, yeah. All right, uh, sold, sold this painting. This is Michael Sylvan, I don't know if I'm saying this right, Gisley. Um, and I don't really know all right, the Gisley printing process means squirting microscopic dots onto quality paper and canvas. The ink is absorbed slightly and blend to re reproduce a fine art edition of the painting. The combination of pigment inks and paper or canvas gives stunning vibrance, vibrancy and realism to the print. It is a really nice print. Uh, I picked this up. I can't remember if it was five or eight dollars somewhere. No more than ten. Definitely, I, I'm thinking it was around seven dollars. Um, sold it for fifty-five plus shipping. 
I was hoping to sell it locally, but it is small enough. There's no glass in it. It's, it'll be easy to ship. And uh, I accepted an offer on that. And then I had noticed that it had like, it has some, it has, it's not perfect. It's got some issues with the, with the frame. It's got some nicks in it. So I just snapped a few extra pictures. You could see this in the picture, but it was kind of at an angle where one could easily think that, oh, he's trying to hide something. And, and I'm not, I just didn't, you know, sometimes when I get listing, I get listing and I get into a rhythm and I miss things. So I went ahead and snapped a picture of that and took another picture of that. Uh, up close and I, I messaged the buyer and I'm like, hey, I'm like, I don't know if you were able to see these in the picture. I go, I'm planning on accepting your offer as long as you're okay with this, let me know. She got back to me, she's like, I'm cool with that. So I accepted that. Talk about Ikea all the time. Uh, this is for a lot of four. The other ones are, they're, I, no point in me showing you, they're all the same. They're, this is called Ikea, no. Ekb Volter, Ekb Ikea, they name all of their stuff in their, in their original Norwegian language, so it doesn't make any sense. They're just like wooden uh, brackets of some sort. Uh, five, four of them sold brand new for 50. Uh, I find these all the time in my area, and I think I pay like five bucks for all of them. Um, and 50 was a good deal. Like I think the one of the cheaper ones were 60 for four, but they sell for anywhere from 10 to 13 a piece. But it's way better if you can find, you know, a lot and then pair them up. And sometimes I'll I'll find one or two here, create a listing and then I'll find another one in a garage sale or something and then I'll add to, I'll just keep adding to the listing until it gets you know to a decent amount and uh, and then someone comes along and buys it. Cuz you got to make it in this day and age, it's getting to the point where you got to make it appealing of a listing enough to make people want to pay how much they're going to have to pay in shipping and handling. And this is this is this is something that's gonna it's gonna challenge us as resellers uh, every year, every every year, two times a year as we get these price increases, which sometimes feels unsustainable um, when you when you consider how much shipping has gone up. And uh, yeah, this is something that I kind of talk about a lot. And this is one of the factors that's, that, that I think is really threatening uh, the reselling uh, business in general, uh, especially when you factor in all the other fees from eBay, or everything that is increasing and it's getting more and more challenging. All right, sold this extraterrestrial friends and foes book for, 25 bucks. This is actually a good book to look out for. It's got lots of stains and 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 wear, and it's got all kinds of uh, stuff on the inside. I think if this would have been in premium condition, it's like a $75 book. This is part of that big lot of uh, kind of like conspiracy esoteric books that I got picked up a couple months ago, still selling tons of stuff out of this. Uh, 25 bucks for shipping. And then I think we just have, oh, we just got one more. And then, uh, and I'm not going to publish, I'm not going to stop, I'm not going to publish this video right now. I'm going to let it, and then I, I'm, I'm going to start packaging, and then I'll probably complete it later. See if other things, though. I just sent out a bunch of offers, and uh, offers do feel more normal right now in terms of the amount of offers to watchers I'm able to send out. You know, I, I woke up today, I think I had nine on the one store, six or seven on the other. So I went ahead, took some time to uh, to send out uh, personalized offers to people. And one's already accepted. I have another guy that I'm gonna be working on a comic lot that he wants to pick up. I just wanna pull them. So yeah, I'll, I'll have some more things to add to this video. But as of right now, seven sales at 217. This Ragnarok four issue set I have had forever. I mean, forever. I don't even know how many years I've had this. Um, this sold for $7 and believe it or not, this is going to the Philippines. How cool is that? I've, so he has one of those addresses in Portland. I'll be shipping it there and before, this was really weird. Tell me if this has ever happened to you guys. 
When I got the offer, it showed that it was in Portland and I'm not gonna decline. It was like, literally, it was like a penny or two below my asking price. I don't know if he wasn't able to just buy it now, if maybe the system was causing him to have problems, because why would you make an offer like a penny or two below, you know, the asking price? That seemed a bit strange. And then, so the, the, the list, the address showed Portland. So I'm like, okay, it's going to the States, no problem. I accept it. And then when I went to send the invoice, it was a Philippines address. And I'm just like, oh, that's weird. Because we were just having this discussion on this on this channel about people who are in, in foreign countries and then they purchase something, but it ships to the States, but then eBay charges them, the, the, the seller, like an, an additional, you know, I don't remember what, what one of the uh, viewers called it, but basically it's like another tax kind of. So I'm curious to see if I'm gonna get that. I haven't seen it yet. So I had never shipped to the Philippines. So I went out, went on, kind of was checking rates and it is expensive to ship to the Philippines. Like it would have cost me like 20 bucks, no tracking to ship this. And it was, if you wanted tracking, it was gonna be like, no, it would have been like, no, not 20. It would have been like 15, no, no tracking. It would have been like, 32 with tracking just for four comics so i message him i'm like hey i'm like your address shows us but now i'm getting a philippine address to ship to where do you want this shipped and somehow during all of that he just paid for it and it showed up he's like ship it to the states because he paid and then the ship to address shows portland so i don't know if that's a glitch or if that's just because he has a foreign, or not foreign, but non-North American address, but he also has an address in the States that he ships to. I thought that was weird. Let me know if any of you guys have seen that, if, if you know anything about that. But yeah, we'll, we'll wrap that up here now. I'm gonna get packaging. I'm gonna show you uh, what I was talking about for this local sale. This is Mexican tree bark art i've shown this before um and and this one actually even has it's very thin i just think it's stunning and you know i buy what i think is cool and i think other people will think it's cool and this translated into a sale and i'm not gonna stop i know people have criticized oh you don't check sell through rates and you don't check this or you don't check that and your merchandise is not but it is, it, it's, it's in demand, it just takes a while to sell. Um, both of these, yeah. I, I, I bought these extremely uh, cheap and uh, they're gonna sell for decent, decent money. Definitely pick, if you, you know, if you pick these up for a couple bucks, you're gonna sell them. I, I, if they're in good shape, you're gonna, you're gonna 20 times, 30 times your money on these things. All right, guys, I will be back in a bit and we'll, we'll find out what else sells today. Hey guys, welcome back. It is now Monday evening. This is the second part of the What Sold uh, video. And so I'll be recapping my numbers since my last What Sold video was Friday. Pretty low, but I'm okay with that because there are more serious and pressing issues that I do want to discuss and I can't do them all in this video. There's just, there's a lot going on right now. I had a little fun last night with the video and it was, you know, the whole premise of that video is um, how so many people on my channel have commented on, you know, the idea that eBay cap sales. It certainly feels that way, but that's not what that's not what what I want to talk about right now. Uh, I, I I do want to say that I as soon as I published the video, I published it late last night when I right before I went to sleep. I half thought I was going to wake up to twelve or more kind of thumbs down kind of people that were, you know, criticizing me for doing such a video. But I will say it, it was met with, you know, positive response to me doing it, not necessarily positive response to the topic. It's not, you know, the idea that someone caps your sales is certainly not something that 
well, is positive in any way. But when I woke up this morning and I, like I said, I, I, I logged in, I'm like, oh, you know, nobody's thumbed down it yet. I'm like, that that's interesting. And then somehow I saw, him, well not somehow, but I saw on my feed that Josh Galt was live. So I jumped in his video or jumped in his chat, still in bed. And I was watching his channel and he, the, the topic of that was th three things that will get you suspended. Now, just three, like three main things that he's talk that he's talking about. Now, obviously he goes on to say there are other reasons that somebody can, can lose their eBay account. And, and I take this very seriously, like, because this is what I do for a living. When, when, when you think about the possibility, if you woke up, like if you do this full time or, and, and, or, and, or this is a substantial side hustle for you. If you, if you think about it, if you woke up tomorrow and you couldn't sell on eBay, that would suck. That would suck so bad. Like when I was talking in last night's video about how much I appreciate the fact that eBay's website is there, that's not me just saying that. Like it is like I I really do feel that way and that's why sometimes I might come off pretty intense and I can kind of like go off on rants. It's because I know eBay can do so I know it eBay can be so much more. I I I know it. Even today, I was on the phone talking to a Vero, Vero rep, and not because I got a recent Vero, but because I was trying to debunk or learn more about something which ended up not even being a thing. And she was excellent. She was great. And on some level, she put my mind at ease, but in some level, it also contradicts some of the information that I had was previously told with, with, with eBay. And they, again, that is part of the problem is that we as sellers, we, we either don't get the information or we get conflicting reports and it shouldn't be that way. In, in no capacity should customers of a business, and we are eBay's customers, be told one thing by a rep and it changed by some, another rep. Again, that's not what this is about. But sometimes I come off pretty intense. I try to be as, I, I try to keep it real. I really do. I, I, I don't know how to do anything else. I don't know how to be any other way. I just, I've always just said it like it is. Like my, my wife, she jokes. If any of you are familiar with Larry David from Curb Your Enthusiasm, she's like, you are Larry David. Like you just say things that are, you know, you should probably not say. I remember watching season one. She was literally like, she would look back and forth at the screen, look at me and she'd be like, she was, she was appalled because she, in her mind, she's like, oh my God, I'm married to Larry David. I know that is not a compliment. But so, so Josh was talking about the three things that can get your account suspended. And I'm going to briefly recap them. I'm going to link it in the bio. I highly recommend this watch. Um, so one, increasing your earnings too fast or in, in, a, in a way that is not this, you know, you know, if you make a certain amount and then suddenly you're doubling it, it, it can get you flagged. It can get you flagged and it can get you in trouble. It can get you, you know, where to where you have to show like receipts and itemized receipts and, and, and whatnot. I don't think that's ever going to be a problem with me, to be honest with you. I don't ever expect to, you know, experience massive growth month over month, quarter over quarter, or year over year. Um, I think I would probably throttle myself back because I, I wouldn't want to get put on that radar of eBay. I don't think that's going to be, ever be a problem. Number two, Vero's. Now, this is something that I have talked about in some of my earlier videos, which probably have not gotten much play because they were all kind of like pre before my channel 
kind of, you know, if you want to say blew up, I mean, it blew up compared to where it was. Everything is relative. So a lot of the, 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 the Vero stuff that I dealt with in the, in the, in the spring and the videos that I made, a lot of people haven't seen those, but it's a huge concern. You know, it's, it's a huge concern because we don't have all the facts on, we don't have like a sheet that shows, you know, this is what we can sell, this is what we can't sell. Things just come out of the left field and it's our fault. You know, it, we're like, we're like babies who don't know that we're supposed, not supposed to touch a hot stove. And then we touch the hot stove and then we know. But it's like, it's like, it's like penalizing a baby for doing that. I had never ever heard of the company called Mad Bomber. And then you, you, you I described Bomber, I get a Vero. So that's another, that's another reason you can get a, a suspension. And then the third reason that he had mentioned, and this is kind of scary. So before I tell you this, after I heard Josh's third reason, I literally got up, walked down the stairs, said to my wife, I might, I might delete my YouTube channel. It might not be worth it. And so his third reason is for people who are on YouTube and they, you know, and obviously I'm just, you know, I don't even have a thousand subs, so I'm not, it, it doesn't apply to me right now, but it is still scary to think. So Josh's reason is if you're, if you have like a social media presence and then, and, and basically you piss one person off and they go into your store and then they, you know, they, they, I don't know, they, they can cause some trouble is what he was suggesting. You know, I mean, I, I guess there would have to be a reason or there would have to be items in your store that were questionable to begin with, but it is still, honestly, it's still a hassle that I don't actually know if I even want to put myself in risk of that. And my wife was like, whoa, whoa, what do you mean? What do you mean? And then so I explained to her and, 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 and all, all while this is going on, Josh is talking about what's going on with the Commonwealth picker, Kevin, how his account was kind of frozen and his funds were put on hold. And, you know, he's one of the, he's kind of like one of the biggest YouTube slash resellers that I know of. I'm, I'm sure there are probably more. I have a very small group of people that I kind of watch and I do watch Kevin and I do enjoy his show. Uh, I don't always agree with everything he says and that's okay. Like we don't always have to agree with everything a reseller says, but if you're a reseller and I'm a reseller, we're on the same side no matter what. Like I would never ever throw another reseller under the bus just because I don't agree with something that they said. I would never, like, I would never go into another reseller store and criticize what they sell or criticize how they sell. Like, I don't need that. I can screw things up enough with my own store that I don't need other people doing that. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because as Kevin was trying to kind of like work through what happened and he still has no clarity it, it ended up working out for him but it's it's a problem it's a problem that i don't know how to solve and 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 it doesn't sit right with me that that this is the way things are done with ebay i just You know, I, I pin a lot of, of, of like my future on reselling and maybe I shouldn't, maybe, maybe that's on me. But not knowing what you did wrong or not knowing why your accounts are frozen, it is a scary, scary thing. And I know, right? Like you have to take a grain of salt 
for anything that you hear on YouTube. Because, you know, sometimes maybe you only hear half the story. You know, you hear about other people whose accounts have been suspended and, and they tell you, they, 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 they list a bunch of things and, and maybe there's more to it. I don't know. Like, you know, like Chris at Daily Refinement, he got, he got permanently suspended from eBay. You know, I, it's kind of been, it's kind of out there and he's talked about it. I can kind of understand that I can kind of understand it, but it doesn't make it right. But like Kevin seems like he doesn't do anything different from what I do in terms of like what he his style of picking. And it just makes me wonder like, is it worth it having a YouTube channel and putting yourself in the direct line of fire of anybody who's having a bad day? saying something that's going to offend somebody it's it's a, it's a question that i need to ask myself on a continual basis as i as i grow this channel and then decide like so i'll be honest with you at this point i'm 50 50 as to if i'm going to continue like i am going to continue but for how long i'm going to continue because like i said i, I <laughs> I can do a perfectly good job of screwing up my own eBay store. I don't, I don't need to make enemies of somebody and then have them cause me problems. All right. Having said that, oh, and, and I don't know if any of you guys have heard about what's going on, on over at Etsy, but there's a bit of a grassroots movement I'm going to I'm going to touch upon it more. I'm going to try to touch upon it more cuz I just literally discovered about discovered kind of what's going on over here. And we think we have problems at eBay, but man, they sound like they have some major problems over there at Etsy. So it just like right now, I literally spent a good part of the day kind of just in this daze. Like, maybe I'm overreacting. I, I do have a tendency to kind of overreact to things. I, I can't help it. That's just my personality. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know what to say. But I, I do know that I'm uneasy about a lot of things right now in the reselling world. And I'm uneasy about how What's the word I'm looking for? It's not coming to me. How delicate of a situation eBay can be when they, you know, when they hold all the power and their decisions can be made that, that, you, that you have no chance to make a case or kind of like, because it can be so hard to get a hold of anybody, number, number one, on eBay. And it can be so hard to get a hold of somebody who has any power whatsoever. So to recap, I love eBay. I really do. I have some major concerns. So I, I, I mean, I've had major concerns. And I just... Yeah, I just, I feel, I feel very vulnerable as a seller. And I think anybody who have kind of gotten into bed with eBay, you know, with, with as their, you know, they're my sole platform that I use aside from, you know, really starting to make an aggressive push to, to sell more things, more things locally. And that is, has been going well. I just feel very vulnerable and you know let me know what you guys think like those of you who are resellers I don't have the answers I really don't like I'm just I'm just a guy who I'm thankful for you for you guys in the community that has sprung up the uh, I appreciate all of your guys's comments all of your guys's support I really do um I don't delete any comments I all if I could only ask, if you have criticisms of, of me, 
by all means, leave a thumbs down, but leave a comment. Let me know what it is. Like, is it just me? Is it just my personality? Is it just, you know, the topic that you just, you just completely disagree with? Like, giving me a thumbs down doesn't help me be a better YouTuber. It doesn't help me be a better reseller. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily need help being a better reseller. Uh, I, I do fine with that on my own, but I am new to YouTube. So if, if, if you're still watching and you're planning on leaving a thumbs down, please leave a comment. Like, let me know what it is. All right. All right, let's flip it. Let's flip it to something positive because I've rambled on enough. The other day I had sold these Nico Japanese uh, magazines. I just want to read the comment that the, that the lady had left. I'm assuming it's a lady because the feedback that she left just because every once in a while feedback will just like make me laugh and it's just like, oh, this is why I'm doing this. So she, so she said, very protective packaging and fair price. I love them. I stare at them for hours. I just thought that was adorable. I read out to my wife and she was just like, she, she took a picture of it for, um, for our kids. So one of our daughters has uh, three cats that I'm allergic to cats. And I'm just like, in my mind, I'm like, why do you keep getting cats? Are you trying to tell me something? All right, so since yesterday, six sale, no, eight sales for 126. So that brings the total since Friday to 15 sales at 343. I'll be uploading this video later on, late tonight my time, early, most likely early time your time. Six of them were promoted, 15 were organic. No, <laughs> six were promoted, nine were organic. All right, let's start off with this Scooby-Doo bag. Scooby-Doo kind of like messenger bag kind of thing. This sold for 40 including shipping. Uh, you can, you know, you can either do 40 including shipping or 25 plus 15 shipping, however you want to look at it. Uh, it's, it's in very good condition. It is pre-owned, but I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. And um, I was a big Scooby-Doo fan growing up. In fact, my first dog I named... Like I got to name him and I named him Scooby. So little, little sentimental place in my heart. Uh, this Nestle, this Nestle pin sold for ten dollars uh, plus shipping. I, and I messaged the buyer because I actually had two kind of like boycott Nestle pins. I don't, I don't know what this is all about. I didn't really do any research. I don't know why people want to boy boycott Nestle, but. Uh, yeah, he, he, he didn't bite on the, uh, on the, on the second pin. I always kind of like wonder what people do with these when they buy them. A ticket stub for Deep Purple. 1985. With Girl School, that was the opening band. I don't know that. Look at that. Back then, concert ticket, $16.50. This sold, <laughs> this sold for um, eight. I always round up, just so you know. If something is like $17.56, I always round up. If it's $17.10, I always round down. So this sold for $18. This sold for more than it cost back in 1985 to go to the show. That is interesting. Now, I have a theory that as technology goes and, and, and you no longer have ticket stubs anymore, I kind of think these, these things will become more collectible. I could be wrong, but I mean, $18 for a piece of paper, that's, that's cool. And, and who knows, maybe he went to this show and I was the only one that had it listed, but yeah, I, I think that's pretty awesome. A Wonder Woman comic, nothing special except it's, you know, kind of a, she looks like she's in a, in, in kind of a bikini to sold for 10 bucks. Uh, a trade paperback, um, 
called Outer Darkness, sold for $14 plus shipping. If you ever get a chance, so John Lehman wrote this. He, his claim to fame was a comic called Chew. And, he, and in it, he was a detective. And if he ate something, he would get like, man, it's, it's been a long time since I've read this. It was a phenomenal comic. And it was like one of those comics that kind of was like super popular and, and the earlier issues sold really, really well. I don't really know if they do anymore. And I always wondered if it was going to get developed, but it, it, you know, he would, he would eat something gross and then he would have like flashbacks and images. All right, sorry about that. That was my uh, my wife calling saying that she is hungry and she wants to eat now. So let's finish this video. Um, yeah, Outer Darkness, $14. His his first series, Chew, was, was definitely, it's definitely a good read. All right, so I don't really know what these are. Uh, I know Toki Doki is like a brand that normally I associate with bags, but I guess they make some little toys. So these are like sushi cars, like little toys. There were two boxes. Hmm. So I have these comic short boxes that I've, I've been switching some of my inventory to, um, to store things in. And I'm smelling something that one of the, I, sh I guess I need to check. I mean, it, it smells good. It smells like a, like a perfumer, but that could be a problem. I have to look at that. All right. All right. Um, and one other sale. <laughs> Sorry. I literally have the attention span of a, of a dog sometimes. I literally just showed you guys, um, I bought a Build-A-Bear and it had these on it. Uh, and I sold these, these outfits for $14 plus shipping, which is more than I paid for the actual plush itself. So the, everything that, I think I paid like $3 for the plush. So the plush, everything that else is profit on that. So... Yeah, so sales, not the greatest, but I'll take it, right? Like, after today, it was just, you know, there's just there's just a lot going on in the community. And I want to acknowledge that. And, yeah. I'm going to wrap this up right here. Like like I said, this has just been not a good day. And there's 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 a lot of other things to unpack but my wife is hungry. So, um, I, I do know, all right, there were a couple other things I wanted to talk about real quick. Well, really one other thing that I wanted to talk about. Um, in last night's video, I had, um, a few comments I wanted to read because I thought they were worth it. So let's do this real quick. So uh, Laurel Williams, 4389 said, as I was watching your video, something strange happened in my eBay store. I've been selling for 20 years on eBay, but only part time. Today I was in my store, in their own store, looking at what sold, clicked on one of the pictures in the listings and a completely different item, not mine, popped up. It was treating me as a buyer, looking for a similar item to mine and giving suggestions where to go, very strange. Definitely not something that we want to see. We don't want to be in our own. We don't want buyers in our own store and then being taken away like that. I, I can't I, I can't imagine who would want that except for eBay. But to be honest with you, why does eBay care who's getting the sale? Right. So anyhow. Let me know if anybody else has, ha has seen that or experienced that. I can't believe these smell like that. Um, 
James Kelly 6350 said the ineptness of eBay to keep their website working is the root cause of up and down sales. I highly doubt eBay is monitoring 18 million sellers and capping them when they reach a certain dollar sales amount. The only way they could do that is to shadow ban your listings. Well, they actually kind of admit that they do do that to some degree. They actually, they, they, they do admit and they do that so buyers don't get growth too too big too fast so they can't fulfill their own orders, right? So the technology is is there. I really believe has I really believe eBay has nefariously pushed promoted listings which is impacted which has impacted the algorithm. Buyers can no longer organically search for what they're looking for eBay re revenue growth was all from advertising fees. Another YouTuber is telling you to always add best offers, run coupons, etc., which basically means lowering your listing prices, the race to the bottom theory. The funny part of that is that the YouTuber mainly sells low dollar trading cards and postcards with fee shipping. If you're not cross listing, you're going to die a slow fee induced death on eBay can't argue with that. I mean, I can't argue with any of that statement, really. Uh, it, it, it's, it is true. And then the, uh, the critical observer 7585 said, the question is, how does eBay restrict sales? Do they just lower your rank on your search or do they actually block buyers from buying you? You know, eBay has coders, they, they, they can create algorithms that can easily do statements. If X's account reaches, say 10% over like a 12 month average, then it can throttle, it could throttle, throttle your sales. Again, this is just speculation on my part. It is one of the largest databases online out there. I mean, there are a number of things that could happen if, if, th if that statement happens then, I mean, you know, they could, you know, maybe buyers never receive our offers. Well, we have no way of knowing that. Like there have been times where I, I send an offer out and I'm just like, is anybody getting this? Cause I'm not even, you know, I'm actually sending like personalized messages. I'm like, you have added this to your watch list. Do you not want to buy this? Cause I'm giving you a good deal. Um, they, there could be, you mean there are checkout issues. There could be checkout issues. They could lower your search ranking. They could end up putting more advertising than normal on your sale to try to divert sales, right? There are a number of things that could be done to help decrease your sales. And then the last one is from Jail Stanton, 1968. I think one thing that's really killing our sales is how eBay puts the highest paying promoters at the top. Some garbage in between that person and the next highest promoter and so on down the line. I have had friends I've discussed this with who are buyers of old 70 RPMs. These are people with money to spend, but they're telling me that they can't find anything, even stuff that they know is there or that it comes up pages later with them putting it in the same title due to the clock clocking. I'm not sure if that was meant to be cloaking or clocking. eBay's logic makes no sense to me. They want to reward the person who pays the most with the high position, but this doesn't guarantee the sale. And by showing fewer items up front, eBay effectively lessens the chance that a sale will happen. So by charging us more, and many can't, eBay is effectively cutting its own throat from overall sales. In addition, buyers aren't seeing as many choices and are deciding to go elsewhere. This is a problem that eBay should address because no matter what they think about advertising, charging advertising, they, they need to get their search fixed. So they at least get the sale. They don't want the buyers to leave eBay and to go somewhere else and shop. In addition, buyers aren't seeing as many choices and are deciding to go elsewhere. I was watching one of the lady YouTubers who sells clothing and she brought up a great point about how there were 2.8 million lady tank tops listed last year. I don't know which lady YouTuber he's referring to. 
There are 9 million this year, so that would account for some stuff not being seen. But I'll take it a step further. If eBay throws a bunch of garbage like tires, records, books, etc. in the search, then it makes it even harder for people to find listings. eBay just needs to keep it simple and show our uh, damned items, but that's a huge bridge. But that's a bridge too far, it seems. So yeah, I mean, there's lots of things that are that are wrong right now and it's not that i necessarily want to choose to focus on them but if you don't focus on them a little they're not going to get addressed right so i just thought those were a couple comments that were that were worth kind of singling out because i know sometimes i have problems ensuring that i go through and read all the comments the, the youtube format is not that easy so i'm sure that viewers of the channel aren't reading all the comments to begin with so let me know what you guys think. Let me know. I, I've, I've, I've laid a lot out there. And like I said, there's going to be a lot to kind of unpack through the week. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I have some things that I need to think about. Um, I would appreciate any anything that you guys have to say. I always appreciate I try to read everything. I try to, you know, comment when, when the comment is warranted. And uh, yeah. If you are still here and, and you enjoy, you have enjoyed this video, please uh, subscribe if you haven't already and give this a thumbs up. Or if you're thumbs downing it, leave me a comment. Let me know why you're thumbs downing it. That will help me out. Like I'm human. Like I, I, it, I want to be, I want to be better. I'm also new at YouTube. Keep that in mind. Like I'm still kind of finding my voice. I'm still kind of deciding what kind of channel this is. And I, if anything that anybody can appreciate, no matter whether you agree or whether you would disagree with me, is that I try to be as real and authentic as possible. I have always been that way. And I, that like, like I can say that this is my promise to you, but you don't need to pay attention to what people, what, what people say. You just need to pee. You just need to pay attention to what people do, and that will show you what kind of person people, anybody is. So, we will see you soon, hopefully, and feed that YouTube algo, and have a good have a good evening, have a good morning, whenever you're viewing this. Have a good afternoon. Uh, take care. Bonus footage. Um. I almost forgot. I'm not going to have these tomorrow, so I won't be able to add them in tomorrow's video. The Mexican oak bark art, Mexican bark bark art that uh, I showed you guys the other day. The lady had contacted me today, local sale. She's going to buy the other ones that I have. And I just want to show, show you them because they are quite beautiful. And these ones are much, these ones are smaller. This, this one is my favorite. I love this one. Uh, and my wife already started eating without me, so <laughs> I get. Oh wait, so I guess I can take a little bit more time. Um, yeah, these. It's funny. I bought some of these at a thrift store, not really knowing what they are, just knowing that they were beautiful and 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 really cool, and I wanted to learn more about them. Got them home, listed them. And I don't remember if they sold before I had found more at a garage sale, but I had found a bunch at a garage sale. And it was like one of those garage sales where I, I, I remember we got there at like noon. So we were like late and I was just engaging and talking with the, uh, a couple of elderly women there that, that were, you know, just kind of like having a sale, getting rid of some stuff. And they had, like she was trying to like sell me uh, like these this perfumes or this this healthcare stuff, and I'm I'm really trying to get out of that stuff because uh, that stuff will get you viros or you know expirate uh, expired and whatnot. So, and I was like, do you have any like paintings or any, any artwork? And then she had like this; they were all kind of rolled up in a bundle, and no one had saw them. She's like, oh, I do have these, and she showed them to me. And uh, that is what this 
plus the other two that I showed the other day, and then there was another lot, I wanna say like a three or four uh, piece pieces lot that I had sold locally as well. Um, yeah, like I, I literally got a really, really good deal. But yeah, I like this stuff. I think it's, uh, I think it's really beautiful. Again, that's my favorite one. But yeah, these are, these are most likely, uh, and this is a returning customer on, on Craigslist, which is kind of crazy to me because, you know, all the effort that I try to put in to get repeat customers for eBay, and then I don't even do anything. And then this, this woman just comes back. She, she had bought the Tibet, Tibetan kind of like Cosmo astrology thing. I believe I showed you guys. I didn't really know what it was. Um, yeah, they bought that. Anyhow, I just wanted to show you guys this because I thought this stuff was, was really beautiful. And like I said, I probably won't have it tomorrow. So this is good night. <laughs> I was going to do a Truman Show reference, but forget it. All right, guys, have a good one.